What up, it's your homeboy Vince12 here, and I'm gonna be reacting to another video. Uh, I love that. I lo I'm keeping that intro. Uh, I'm only- I only did that because of mild observation I made about all the shitty reaction videos you see on YouTube, is that most of them, for some bizarre reason, start up with the phrase, What up, it's your boy, slash girl. So anytime you wanna try to re watch a reaction video, and really, there's only like maybe five channels that do reaction videos out of the hundreds that actually are any decent. Take a shot anytime you hear that sentence. But don't say I recommended you do it because I don't want to be held responsible for your inevitable death via alcohol poisoning. So yeah, this is me with another random pause critiques. This one looks reasonably long. I'm hoping that I can read multiple ones as I did before. Uh, I think the last one I did was the Yandere-ish one. I can't remember what it was called. The Perfect Girl or some shit like that. I recall thinking that was somewhat decent, but... You know, like I said, I'm always willing to... Give every story on this side a benefit of the doubt. I got my... Uh, cap a cappuccino here this time, not coffee or tea. Still hot, but it's delicious. So, let's begin, shall we? <clears throat> the oh no no no! I'm not. I'm reading original stories, not something copied from something that's already been published. Sorry. I've always been confused about that. On the I, I understand. Like I would s expect there to be some kind of subsection on the creepy pasta wiki for stories that are already well known and popular. Why there isn't, and it's kind of mixed in with the rest. I am not sure. Although it's always like, I've always found it somewhat confusing, but well, whatever, let's get to it. <clears throat> Mirrored closets. Oh, wow, this is short. My parents made me sleep in the room with the mirror closets. They knew I was afraid, but they said big kids face their fears, not run away from them. Not ran away from them. I tried sleeping with my lights on, but they would come and turn them off in my sleep. I wake up, night after night, shrouded in darkness and terrified. I will lie perfectly still. I didn't even dare move my eyes away from the ceiling. Seconds, minutes, soon a couple of hours will be gone, and I will still be lying in bed, afraid to move or breathe too loudly. Then the sunlight will begin to rise and my body would relax. The mirrors aren't nearly as scary during the day. One weekend, my parents had to fly out of the state for a wedding, but they decided I was old enough to stay home alone. I hugged them goodbye and sat around the rest of the day, watching TV until I was tired. Wait, what? How old are you that you... Okay, you don't like to sleep in the... I'm not saying that adults... Uh, you know, let's get to it. Uh, hugged them goodbye, what? TV and tired. I switched the TV off, walked up to my room lazily, switching on my lights and climbing into bed. I didn't even think about my mirrors as I was drifting asleep. I woke, I woke a couple hours later, drenched in sweat and shrouded in darkness. They had come in and turned my lights off again. That was it. What, um... I have several questions. Um, how old is this, the, the narrator here, where he's old enough to stay home, and like I was saying, just because you're afraid of the dark, that doesn't mean it's not a childish phobia. It's understandable. I understand, like there are people that actually do genuinely have that, but they they refer to him as big kids, as in old enough to big kids. Essentially, is just the, is the, when you're referred to that. That's when you're on the cusp of getting like approaching preteens. I would say I don't think that's old enough to stay at a house by yourself. Maybe they sent a babysitter over or had an uncle or some shit. I don't know. But that's what, that's probably how I will do it. Um, the and I also have to feel it necessary to ask what is the significance of the mirrors themselves? The the fact that the closet is a mirrored closet. I don't understand what the point of that is. It, it's it feels like it's not. I mean, I I honestly thought it was leading up to some weird thing where every night he sees he can't stand the mirror closet because it's always open. 
and he can see his reflection in bed, and he's always paranoid, or something like that, where he's paranoid about something being there, and then when his parents leave and there's no one essentially around to kind of uh, dissuade his paranoia, there is, he thinks he's seeing his reflection, he's trying to convince himself, and then the, as he's staying still, the reflection starts moving, what he thinks is the reflection starts moving around of his room. Like, maybe it's starting to hint that whatever's in the mirror, he can only see in the mirror, or there's something that he thinks is a reflection, but his actual a thing standing there that looks like him, for what knows reason, is also kind of deliberately antagonizing him. The kind of... The stinger at the end, to me... I mean... I admire the fact that this is essentially a short story. Like, this is basically like a short little thing here. And the whole point of it is to kind of, um... You know, when you have a horror story like this, the stinger is supposed to be where it really hits you. I would like to point to a story, and I'm probably going to post my reading of it at some point, called, uh, Lightning. And it was a very, a very short story that I read at some point that was recommended to me when I was, uh going to a certain uh, school uh, by a classmate of mine, and I read it, and the stinger at the end really hit you, beca because it's, the the thing is, it subtly builds up to it, I didn't, I didn't feel like this, there was a, not tangible, but there was a, a, the, a potential threat in the scenario, he was paranoid, and it didn't feel like... I didn't understand what he was necessarily afraid of. Afraid of the dark? Like, afraid of some kind of creature in his closet? He feared the mirrors... The, the mirrored closet, for some reason. Like, from as far as... Like, it kind of is jumbled in that instance. I mean, if, is, is his fear of, of the dark or the mirrored closet? Why is the fact that the mirrors... Uh, 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 frightening him in, in any way? Because his fear is of the dark. So why are the cloth is, is are the mirrors a problem when you won't be able to even fucking see them when it's dark? I mean, this is really kind of a jumbled kind of story. Like I I get the feeling that the person who wrote this wanted to kind of like I said, write a short little thing and have the stinger at the end have a very big punch, but the stinger only has a punch when it's very, very subtly kind of builds up towards it. And it's like, your, your subconscious doesn't really register what's happening at first. And then when the stinger comes, like at the very end, it's like everything kind of locks into place. And you're like, oh shit. Uh, I, and it, it all kind of hits you at once. Here... There, it doesn't feel like anything's built up on, like, okay, some external force at some point, because he's always been fearful of the dark. I mean, I mean, I get the, I think the idea is that he, like, his, he always assumed that his parents were the ones that were turning off his lights in the, in the middle of the night, and with his parents aren't home, something still turned his lights off. A, a, a disturbing notion, to be sure. I mean, it is a unnerving... It's like that short story, like, the, the, the last man on Earth, like, there's a last man on Earth locked in a bunker, and then someone knocked on the door. And that that's a chilling prospect in and of itself as well. However, I don't think it works quite here, because, again, it didn't subtly build up to it there was no notion of an actual tangible being that was responsible for this, and as such, you know, I, I don't feel like it has the punch it should at the end. And I know I'm kind of going on and on about, like, what is essentially one of the shortest stories I've read on this whole thing, but, I don't know, like, I was earnestly expecting something... I don't know, when, when it comes to these short little stories, I do expect a lot from them, believe it or not, because in that short amount of time, you have a lot of potential to really have your audience, or reader rather, sink their teeth into what's happening and give a genuine chill down their spine. And I do like that. Um, I see people here liked it. You know, feel, feel free to disagree. I, you know, whatever. 
I, I, do, I don't think this was very good. Um, well, you know, I'm glad that some people enjoyed it, so apparently, you know, maybe he's doing... Maybe this person has some other material that actually has appeal for this. It seems like about, well, two years old now. So, we're going to move on from here and go on to another random pasta. Let me take a sip of my cappuccino from my Bubba mug. I love this thing so much. It's fucking delicious. Oh, wow. This is a bit long. I'm wondering if I should save this for another time. Huh. I'm trying, you know, I'm, I, I'm gonna skip this. I might bookmark this for another time. And the only reason is that, for the most part, I'm trying to... When I do more than one story, I want to make sure that they're short enough to where I can actually put a, you know, uh, a decent spin, like, on it. But, I will, I'll try to get back to this when I can. Oh, an interesting title in and of itself, right here. <clears throat> A book of names by I don't see. They just have something where you you can credit yourself at the begin at the beginning of the uh, the story, but whatever. It was on a grim October morning that I chanced upon a rather odd and lengthy book while roaming about a particularly shabby shabby library in Archangel, Virginia. The place was practically a historical monument as it was built in the early 1800s and survived the passing centuries with little repairs done to it besides the modernized innovations such as electricity and heating now i'm not the type i'm not the one to i'm not one to delve into the dark arts or whatever you fancy calling it but i was more than a little intrigued by the ti book's title the book of names it was large and sat upon a walnut brown desk that looked almost as old as the town itself the creaking wooden chair that sat behind it looked the same. I slowly sat down on the chair, careful to avoid collapsing it if it wasn't sturdy, as sturdy as I hoped. When I settled in comfortably, I took a long look at the book. The cover was characterless, as it only displayed the black void to me. Though I did see the letters D-A etched on in small print, at the bottom right of the tome. Initials, I assume. The writer's initials. I took the cover in my hand and lifted it to the blank page. Taking that page, I lifted it to another blank page. And after lifting the second blank page, I finally discovered the words. The Book of Names. I discovered the words Book of Names. Below it were the initials DA again. And this time, one of the initials were the, the words. Those who do not know the power of the secret words would be wise to... Oh, how did I do that? What the fuck? My, my webcam was just... Whatever. What is happening? Ah. Those that do not know the power of the secret words will be wise not to read further. Those who do not know the meaning of names would not be wise not to read further. Those who do not understand the meaning of these words would be wise not to read further. Those who are aware of the power of secret words, of the meaning of names, and the meaning of words thusly would be wise to continue reading with a measurable caution. Do not abuse secret words. D.A. As I read the passage, I felt an overwhelming sense of apprehension came over me. My, scholar, my, my scholarly interest forced me to turn another page. This page revealed to me a list of locations in a very small handwritten print. I soon realized that I was looking at a list of countries, the provinces, the cities and towns, and within those countries. As I skipped over a few pages, I found only a list of different countries, and came to the fact that this probably had every city, town, province, and country in the world. After searching for a few minutes, I was able to find Archangel Nevada, United States of America, and then to the far right corner of the number 3,968. It didn't surprise me that the book had more than 3,000 pages in it. It was quite the behemoth. 
After turning to page 3968, I found a list of names that seemed to be in alphabetical order. Aaron Aronson, Aaron Umbercrumble, Aaron Erberthony, F. Bernardi, I, I don't know. The list of names went on and pages af- went on and on for pages after. I skipped the uh, I skipped a couple hundred pages and found only more names. Skipping another couple hundred pages, I found only more names. Now skipping more than a couple thousand pages, I came across one titled Ritual Words. Turning that page, I found a list of words that did not seem to be English. Though they were written in English letters. I read one in a loud and hushed voice. Najal, Noaj, Thied, Thaid. I don't know why, and I don't know how to explain it, but to me the words sounded evil. I read another set of words out loud. Samaj, Zilia, Inog. And these words sounded inhuman, unnatural to me, as well. I continued to read the list of unnatural and evil-sounding words, but soon went back to the same name section of the book. Going back to Archangel, I continued to read the I continued to read the names. Name after name of names I did not rec- I didn't recognize, but there was one I did recognize. The librarian told me that his name was Jonas Steinberg. And sure enough, there was the name Jones Steinberg Albert St- Jones Rudolf Albert Steinberg. I read it out loud, Jonas Rudolf Albert Steinberg, and for some odd reason, stated the ritual words, Simaj Zilia Inog. I don't know why I thought something would happen. I suppose I don't know. But suddenly, I heard a woman scream. I jumped and turned around. The direction of the screaming, quickly getting out of my chair to see what was the matter. What's wrong? What happened? Asked one man standing by, also going to see what was wrong. The librarian, he, he just. He's. He's dead! shouted the woman, who I assume had screamed in the first place. A gush of hushed voices erupted around the room. I stood there. The power of the secret words. Had I somehow killed the man by saying his name than the ritual words? The more I thought of it, the more I came to the grim realization that I might have caused the death of Jonas Steinberg. I reached back to the evil venomous book that could not have been made by any righteous being in desperate research for my name. I found what it said. I found it, it said, Andrew Carlton Ward, then Samaj Zilia and Nog. I had taken the life of a man, and was not fit to live. I dropped. Those who do not know the power of secret words best not read further. Those who do not know the meaning of names would be wise not to read further. Those who do not know the meaning of the words would be wise not to read any further. I would have to say, all in all, this was a decent story. Uh, I, I, I mean, I think the setup to everything was what really hooked me in initially. Uh, but it kind of, it kind of petered off after a while. Really, I mean, I, I think it's pretty much known one of the biggest cliches of creepy pasta. Excuse me. Uh, one of the biggest cliches that certain creepypasta have are the tendencies for uh, the narrator to commit suicide as maybe from being overracked with guilt or some shit like that. And to me, I didn't feel like there was a very big juxtaposition between him making that mistake of reading it out loud and then deciding to kill his, take his own life. I mean, a story like this, and the the narrator also said it ahead of time that he was 
more skeptically minded because he was not really very in interested in some like Oracle, you know, dark arts type shit. A level of skepticism on the part of the narrator is kind of necessary to kind of ground this in some level of realism to kind of set home the horrifying notion of a book like this that could exist. The fact that he immediately takes credit for what he did and then com commits to kill himself right on the spot. Like, there is no thought process. There is no, no... Like, there's no real push from maybe some kind of external force to kind of push him that far. No, he just decides, I... I, I know for a fact this is what killed this guy, that I'm responsible, and therefore I'm going to kill myself because I don't deserve to live. Uh, this story should be needs to be a little bit more fleshed out. Again, it needs to make room for some level of skepticism on the part of the narrator in order to really relate to what's happening. Because just one guy being killed... Uh, by this book, considering in the context of what's hap what's the book is about, the book is essentially a list of people's names. It's basically like Death Note. Let's let's be honest. And the fact that this like like a story like this could be really be fleshed out. And I'm thinking of that 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 Stephen King book. Uh, what was it? Say cheese and die. Where, you know, you take a picture of someone and then horrible, horrible things happen to them. They either get killed or get seriously maimed or injured. And it really builds up on that. It really... And it's highlighted by the fact that the people who these things are happening to or are friends and close acquaintances, sometimes people they don't like, of the narrator. And, well, not necessarily... Well, the protagonist, I, I think, is a better, more appropriate thing. A random person who was essentially just introduced at the last minute, who was killed, um, it doesn't really have the, the the punch it should have. It's an interesting concept, albeit not most original, but it's an interesting concept, and it has a lot more potential than this than what this story has presented right here. It, if it were essentially up to me. Um, also, the, the notion that it just kills people, I don't think it's... Because it's a magical book, it says, talks about the power of secret words. And I, when I think of something that builds up... That, that, that's a very broad, nebulous kind of terminology right there. The secret words, the power that they have. And what is the power that these secret words have? They'll just kill you like that. That's it. That's all they do. And I'm not saying that, that that that's exactly what the the person who wrote this had in mind, but I think it would stand to again flesh the story out, maybe get to know the narrator and the world around him a little bit more, and the people that surround him. And I don't know, maybe what was the name of that story? It was um, I remember MD Phantasm did a reading of it that he sent me, but I never I was gonna edit it to put music on it. I never got around to it. Um. Well, the story about the guy who finds the magic drawing utensil and basically goes on a power trip because of it. You, I think you all know what the story I'm talking about. The story of Jacob something. God, I remember. I wish I remember the name of it. But essentially, like there, there was a build up to that, to the climax of that story, and you really got to know the man. You know, the, I think his name was Jacob, the one who had the magic utensil and was essentially using it to his heart's content going on a power trip. I could see the same thing happening here. Uh, this person, maybe he has a hard, uh, rather beaten down kind of existence and he's starting to use this book to take advantage, uh, revenge on those he people, excuse me, people he feel has wronged him and some kind of, yeah, and eventually he has to pay for what he's done. Maybe the book itself is sentient, or the person who wrote the book, can, or the being that wrote the book, rather, can detect it being used for malicious purposes, and comes and singles him out. And, it's like, the more he uses the book, the more something is taken from him. Like, 
some kind of weird scenario where you can't use this unless, you know, the equivalent exchange. You take one person's life, we take someone the life of someone you care about. Or we take something off of your person. Something like that. Like, you, you gain your misfortune from using, which is something that is essentially just horrible eldritch type of utensil. I keep using that word. Um, if I had to rate this, I don't normally do ratings because really they're kind of arbitrary. I'd give it a 5.5 out of 10. Like, I, you know, I'd give it a 6. Concept alone, uh, maybe a bit of repetition, but I understand that it was probably just a, a deliberate choice on the part of the author. It's, it's quite disappointing how it kind of just teeters into just... And then they kill themselves because, the, like, it just it just came right the fuck out of nowhere. I mean, I'm guilty of that too. When my first creepy pasta had that, and I the ver- I I don't know. I have I think I have the excuse that I was writing it for a col uh, not college, <laughs> not even good. I'm all the guy good. Um, I was writing it for like something for my school, a project I was working on, and I was in a hurry to kind of finish it on a, on a deadline. And, uh, let me see, I'm reading these comments, everyone seems to, um, everyone seems to kind of mostly disagree with me, <laughs> and I guess, that's right there, death known in another form, random editing, <laughs> whoops, accidentally killed a man, time to kill myself, <laughs> yeah, it was, cl- it was cliche, I did, I think that this story has a lot of potential to be fleshed out and expanded upon, because I really would like to see someone tackle this. Again, if you do it, it will probably end up like, say, cheese and die. Which, I like to point out that that story, along with a lot of L.R.L. Stein's books, like, people kind of write them off as being for kids. Go back and read them. Not only do they hold up well, there's a lot of horrifying undertones to a lot of his books. Uh, I think of what was it? Sleepaway Camp. It was the name of it. With the the, where they're in a camp that is basically appeared out of the ether. The what happened to the people there? Uh, not Sleepaway Camp. I think that was the movie with the killer with the dick. Oh, uh, I I don't I I th- uh no n- n- I'm just going on a tangent right now. The point is this story is meh. It could have been better. I really think it could have stood to be a little bit more fleshed out. But other other than that, um, decent job, I, I suppose. So, it's been going on 30 minutes, and I hope this was enough to kind of uh, placate you people. You know, all one or two of you people that are actually watch my boring derivative movie... Movies... <laughs> You just saw right there why people aren't subscribed to me. But yeah, but this has been Swell signing out. Y'all have a uh, nice day. And remember... I couldn't think of any clever quips to end this.